this annual PR summit boot camp. Social media, particularly amongst anything else, is the most sustainable infrastructure for maintaining those relationships. How do corporations protect the brand in the age of Facebook? It's, it's about taking more responsibility these days because there's actually a faster editorial process. So if your customers are your evangelists and they feel empowered to say great things about you, then guess what? That's PR. And I think it's always best to have one point that you start at and then from there expand and make sure that you don't limit um, where, you, where you keep your focus. You may not be seeing a whole other market share that may be interested in your product or your service. There's that one tiny pinhole in the target, but that broader pattern is still going to be a great impact to be able to identify a lot of different trends and influencers in that space that will make a bigger difference. How do you align tools toward your objectives? You've got to, got to, got to have a website. That's the one place in the whole internet that you still can control your brand. Using foot social media and digital advocacy and moving that to the mainstream is one tack that we've used and it's actually been very successful in growing the events and raising money and connecting charities to new demographics. It's really important that your current supporters and your sort of natural supporters have a constant upbeat view of how the campaign is going and see forward momentum. It, it really isn't about the methodology. It is, a, it is not about the press release or the media alert or now the tweet or the Facebook posting. It is about the relationship that you have with the folks that you're trying to reach. Defining guerrilla marketing to me is like, what, what is it? It's non-traditional. It has no definition because it's about doing whatever you feel you can do. You can't create something that isn't there. What you can do is tap into something that already exists. So you can find a place where people are sharing a passion and bring them something that legitimately interests them. There's a great, great website right now, and they actually spoke your version. Um, I highly recommend that you guys all go on if you're looking to become an expert in your industry. Create a persona for the brand. Give some value. Sure, I think that um, it's easy to think of the role of a, a PR manager as that of a publicist, but I think that's only one piece of the equation. So I think there is this part of getting articles and getting your CEO interviewed and doing all that stuff, but then I think there's this whole other, far more amorphous part of cultivating a brand voice and helping people within the company describe the product that they're tirelessly working on. I think very often in the startup, folks are so close to the work that they're doing and so emotional about it, it suddenly becomes very hard to describe the thing you're actually making. One of the first things you really need to look for is, yeah, what is the, what is the differentiator for the startup you're working with, um, and what's going to actually grab people's attention when you go out there to the media, the bloggers, the influencers. Um, there's a few options. I mean, sometimes it's the people. I mean, and at the heart of most startups are the people. They're usually the most important. So you need to look at, is the founder known? Do they have some kind of background or pedigree that is well known? Are they being funded by people that are known? You need to build some kind of credibility from the get-go in order to get the press interested. If you don't have that credibility, then you need to kind of build it by having some kind of distinctive product or distinctive um, lead in a market that's just emerging. It's really about, so it's, it's about whether the people already there have the credibility in the market. If not, then you need to really work on crafting with the founding team what is it about what we're doing that's new and innovative enough to be credible in and of itself. Like at Facebook, when I started, one of the things that was really important at that period in time that probably no one remembers anymore was differentiating Facebook from MySpace and all the other social networks that were out there. And there were a few key things to do that. Talking about there being a real name culture on Facebook, it's about people being their real selves and who they really are. And that was a message that we, I think we really effectively hammered home and it was something that if you're doing PR for a startup, you have to be on the front lines of really getting all the spokespeople, getting every piece of copy that's going out there, really get those messages across. And I think um, sometimes that's forgotten, that you need to do that even at the very earliest stage. Think of the one or two things that set you apart. You have to get to the kernel of what makes your story compelling right off the bat. The other thing that can help is to think in bold strokes, hyperbole, uh, be melodramatic, think about what people are looking for, and simplify. The thing about picking a firm is it has to just, you have to do one that matches um, your personality. And the most important thing is that they love what you do. Love, not like, mm -hmm. love. And the best PR firms are the ones that only take up clients that they love, that they that they have people dedicated that are passionate about it. One 
you have to consume the product. And, uh, you know, it's not, again, it's not rocket science. Most local news stations are assignment desk driven. So the first thing that you do is you have to develop a relationship with the assignment desk. One way that you can really stand out is by building those relationships or finding out if you know somebody in common. I think all of us as PR practitioners, we realize there are people we're meeting in this room, we're making new friends, we're making new contacts, building and maintaining those relationships. And I don't read more than the first paragraph of anything unless I have to. <laughs> so. Uh, Many news people are like that, whether you're a print or whether you're um, a broadcast or a radio person. We don't have the time anymore. If you take that extra time to come up with a really unique story angle and think like a reporter, you're going to have a much better chance of success. And in terms of what grabs my attention when I see an email, if it's written like a headline, that's when it grabs my attention. I think the biggest problem I see in most press releases is that you know we are news. So we want to know what the news value is of this, whatever this is. So is it the first time something like this has happened? Is it the largest? Is it the biggest? Is it, you know, it, those kind of words attract attention of, of, of the desk when they're planning out their days. People who pitch me that I'm interested in right off the bat is a brief email where they say, I know you cover, for example, Android platform. Here's an Android developer tool I thought you'd be interested in. And immediately, they have my attention. Looking at trending, um, and we have so many things now online that tell us this is what's hot right now. Um, I have a lot of friends who work in PR, and a lot of times, you know, I think PR I don't want to speak in general terms about PR people, but <laughs> PR people, they get locked into, we're going to take this launch on this day. And they miss the boat because the, that, that subject was hot two months ago. That subject was hot two weeks ago. And if, you, if, you, if you're past your, your prime, if you're expired, you're expired.